Hello everyone, David here. There's a thing I had been wondering about for a while, and it turns out it is a thing. It's about colour and our perception of it. If this is interesting to you, then please keep watching. But first of all, a quick summary of how we see colour in the first place. Inside our eyes, we, well, most of us, anyway, have four types of cells that receive light and send information to the brain. They're called the rods, which detect the intensity of light, and three types of cones, which detect short, medium, or long wavelengths of light, which broadly correspond to blue, green, and red, respectively. Why do we see these particular frequencies the most? And why only in this narrow part of the electromagnetic spectrum? It's difficult to say for sure, but it could be because these colours are important. They represent some of the most important things we would deal with to survive, and they are the most transmissible through water. This chart shows how the three types of cones are stimulated when they receive light. You'll notice that they overlap quite a lot, and this is partly how our brain can perceive colours in a smooth spectrum, rather than just three discrete types. A wavelength of light at, say, 550 nanometers stimulates both the medium and long cones, a colour we perceive as greenish-yellow. Then if we smoothly increase the wavelength, we stimulate the medium cone less and the long cone more, causing us to smoothly perceive a colour change to red. If we were to go the other way, we would see the colour smoothly change to green and eventually blue. In computer and TV displays, we exploit this phenomenon by not emitting light at every possible frequency, but by using primary colours to feed our eyes with different ratios of colour that would be the equivalent of seeing light at a single wavelength. This was explained well in the Vsauce video, This Is Not Yellow, and Captain Disillusion's video, Colour. It leads to another interesting possibility. What if we make mixtures of primary colours that couldn't exist as any single frequency of light? A great example of this is magenta. I can easily make magenta in paint.net by mixing red and blue light, but as you can see on the spectrum, there is no single wavelength of light that corresponds to magenta. You won't see it in a rainbow, and there is no way to make pure magenta. Instead, magenta is just a colour your brain invents when it sees red and blue light at the same time. Now, we can make magenta in real life, by mixing red and blue paint, and then we've effectively done the same thing. We've made a material that absorbs green light and reflects red and blue light. It's not a single frequency of light being reflected off the paint, but a combination. So, all of this is leading up to my original thought. What if there were a way to stimulate the cones somehow in a way that real light or pigment never could? How would our brains process this new information? Would we see some colour we'd never seen before? Well, it turns out that this phenomenon is actually a thing, and it's called impossible colours. Let's go back to our eye chart. For any wavelength of light that stimulates the medium cones, which are the ones that are best at seeing green, it should also stimulate either the short, blue, or long, red cones as well. So if there was some way to trick the eye into only stimulating these medium cones and not the others, then hypothetically we would perceive some kind of hyper-green colour that could never exist in real life, either as light or as a filter. These types of colours, known as imaginary colours, can actually be useful as plots in a colour space chart, even though that would make some regions of that chart technically unobservable. For example, our hyper-green would exist in this region, just outside the horseshoe pattern of the traditional colour space chart. It's worth noting that we think our nerves actually transmit the differences between cone outputs, rather than the amount of stimulation of all three types at once. This is called the opponent process. Instead of getting, say, red, green, and blue values like we would in a computer display, we actually have three channels of information sent to the brain. Red versus green, blue versus yellow, and black versus white, or luminance. Chimerical colours, so named because presumably they are created from some impossible combination, are created from combinations of these channels that wouldn't be observed in real life. It's such a shame that we'd never be able to see these colours. Except we can. Here's an example. I want you to stare at this image for a while. You might need to maximise this video or move closer. Look directly at the target. 
we're going to tire out some of the cones, in particular your medium and long ones, by looking at the yellow colour, which as we know from earlier is a combination of red and green. Exploiting this process of cone fatigue means that when we look at the next image, we'll get a lack of yellow, and hence the blue versus yellow channel of information sent to our brain will be high in blue. Introducing Stygian blue. If the effect worked, you're looking at an impossible combination of black, which is a lack of light and has no hue, and blue. That's an example of a Stygian colour, but you can also have self-luminous colours, which are impossibly bright but also saturated, and hyperbolic colours, which are impossibly saturated. Feel free to pause the video now if you want to see them. Due to the nature of the opponent process, if we're only ever sending red versus green or blue versus yellow, that means we could never send a red and green or blue and yellow signal to the brain. I mean, I can open paint.net and generate a bunch of red and add green, but then I see yellow. Because my cones are active, red versus green is at zero and I'm not seeing blue, so it must be yellow. Then if I add the blue in, both red versus green and blue versus yellow are balanced out and I see white, a lack of colour. The third channel, black versus white, is just sending luminance. But there are still some interesting experiments we can do. Try looking at this image and allowing your eyes to defocus, a little like looking at a magic eye picture, then merging the cross. Now one eye will be looking at blue and the other at yellow. Give it a second. For me, I just see overlapping sections of blue and yellow, but some observers have reported seeing a new colour, a process that could be occurring in the visual cortex of the brain. If such a colour, red-green or blue-yellow, was perceived, it couldn't be shown on the traditional colour chart either in its real or imaginary parts. These kinds of experiments have been disputed, and we're getting onto an almost philosophical approach to considering how we perceive colour, but I still think it's fascinating to contemplate what we might experience when a human, like you or me, suddenly gets some new input into their well-established system of vision. This video has been enormously educational for me to make, and I hope you got something out of it too. Mostly, I'm surprised not just that some kind of impossible colour might exist, but that there are so many types, and some readily available example images you can play with right now to reproduce them. There is a ton of good scientific material out there, so if you want to read more about it, you will be spoilt for choice. Anyway, if you found this video useful, please drop me a like, and you can help me out by subscribing to my channel too. See you next time.